like the greatest like spiritual thing that I learned from my mission I think was like learning how to rely and trust in the Lord um just there were so many times when I felt like I couldn't do it and really I couldn't do it and so being able to rely on the Lord and his strength and the power of the atonement to be able to get through those times um and then I also learned to work hard and persevere there's a lot of things that are hard about a mission and the mission is by far the hardest thing that I've done up to this point in my life and so just knowing that like Sometimes, I don't know, even if you're tired or even if you're frustrated or discouraged, it's always important to just keep working hard and to keep persevering and things will kind of work out. So along with like relying on the Lord, I think I learned how to really just work hard and like, um, I feel like I, I don't know, I worked decently hard before my mission probably, but just I never had done anything as hard as my mission, just the language and the culture and just, so you're just tired sometimes where you've just after 18 months of just going out every day for like hours every day, I think just to like keep persevering and keep working hard even when it like it is hard and you don't really want to. So just kind of like a work ethic, I think. But actually the craziest weather that we had was when I was in Hiroshima, there was actually just like this huge like torrent of rain and it wasn't a typhoon or anything like that it was just like a regular storm but it rained so much that there was huge mudslides in the mountains I ended up killing a bunch of people um like 80 people or something like that and my companion and I had just been out like tracting we were just like housing and doing stuff and it was just pouring rain and like thunder and lightning and it was just it was crazy it's like the most rain that I've ever seen in my life and so and then there was big mudslides and we went and did helping hands after that for like the weeks following that to help clean up. Studying like it seems obvious but like really studying preach my gospel in the scriptures. Um, I think if you know your resources and can use your resources effectively it helps like your teaching and it helps everything just if you are familiar with where things are and what things are and what the rules are and things like that. So I think that's one thing. I, I felt like I studied the scriptures, but I didn't spend a lot of time in PMG. So I would say, like, make sure that you're spending time every day to read your scriptures and PMG. For me, it was, like, finding a way to, like, have, like, some like some closure. Like, that sounds weird. Like, it makes me sound like I'm in, like, mourning or something. But I kind of was when I came back, and I think everyone is a little bit. So just, I don't know. I think keep doing the things that we like did on the mission, keep reading your scriptures every day, keep praying. Like they seem really simple, but I think that's like the easiest way to make the transition. Cause you feel like, cause for 18 months to two years, that was your entire like life was the gospel and everything was about the gospel. And so being able to like have that time every day is kind of like the segue into like going back to like, I don't know, normal life, I guess. And it's just making sure you set it apart the time that you need to to have those spiritual experiences and be spiritually uplifted every day. I ate a whole like squid thing. That was pretty gross. I don't know, that's kind of weird, I guess. Crazy. There was one time we were out on the beach, it was P day and we had like a ward like party kind of thing and we were out on the beach and we were just like walking down the beach and there was these, um, I was just like in basketball shorts and a t-shirt and all these little girls they're probably like, I don't know, like 12 or 13, like came running over to like me and my companion and they're like, hey, what's up? You know, and we like talked to them for a second. They thought it was so funny that we like, we could speak Japanese and they were like, can we take our picture with you? And I was like, okay. And so I have like this random picture, like on my camera of like me and all of these girls that they played basketball too. So they thought that was fun. And just like all of like these girls like around me and people are like, who are they? I'm like, I don't know. They just wanted to take their picture with me. So that was kind of crazy. One of the most like spiritual things was like watching somebody's life change like through the gospel and seeing how from like you start and you like you know them here and you, you start teaching them the gospel and see like how they change their own lives just by like wanting to be like closer to the Savior and wanting to do what the Savior wants them to do. And I th always thought that was such a cool experience to see them making those own decisions. Um, we didn't have to force them or ask them even. They would just do it because they loved the Lord and they wanted to like do what like the Savior would have them do. And so I thought that was really cool. <laughs> There's the, the Doctrine and Covenants are called Kyogito Seyaku, which is like literally like Doctrine and Covenants. Um, but I've heard missionaries say Kyogito Seyaku or Kyogito Sayaku. 
and sayaku means like this sucks kind of so it's like doctrine and like this sucks and so that was i don't know that's like there's like all kinds of like little things like that but that one was kind of funny